What's up, Yoda Tech? Now, be prepared for some uh, peacocks. <laughs> they're going nuts. I guess they're mating right now or something. I don't know. I'm about to be mating my barrel up to my... Never mind. I'll change that felony topic right there. Okay. The dip's in. Uh, so now I'm new gears, front and rear. Locked in the rear. Um, thanks a lot, guys, for all your help. Um, well, and, you know, on this one I was kind of just, I found most of it on Zook, uh, from Zook. Thanks, Zook. You rock. Um, your page on pulling this out was it's just to the T, perfect, with good pictures and everything. It came right out. So, uh, well, it was kind of a bear for me as my first time. I, you know, I was a little nervous about bending something or whatever, you know, too much weight. So, basically, just to let everybody know real quick that's thinking about doing this or nervous, whatever. It's not a big deal, but, you know, you got to have all your trolls ready. You need uh, uh, at least one, possibly two, depending on the angles you're at and if your engine's out, all that stuff. Um, you need one, possibly two, 17 millimeter open, closed end, 19 millimeter, same thing, sockets, 19 and 17. Uh, long and short, half inch and three three eighths would be good because uh, you know some areas of the spindle and stuff like that are just a little tighter to get into and such. Um, then you need a torque wrench, uh, obviously, and you're going to need a half inch drive one because these mounting nuts uh, and bolts. This, this, and this. This one's a hundred pounds. That's a hundred and twenty three. 123. So, um, <laughs> needless to say, you're going to need a half inch drive torque wrench for that one. Um, painted the cross member, the diff. Um, so, basically, what you do is support it with a jack, remove this bolt completely, um, loosen this one and this one, uh, but not all the way out, just holding on by a few threads. Uh, drop them down, you know, till they're, till they're, you know, plush, let's say, with the tip, which has no threads for about a quarter inch, you know. Um, drop those but don't pull them out and while it's dropped um, and this one's pulled or while those are dropped down a little bit and this is pulled crack all six nuts on these these are fixed bolts on this side of the axles same as here crack the nuts on the outsides um, I did it from the bottom made it much easier uh, while you hold on one of the fixed ones with a 17 uh, millimeter um, closed in, that's what I did, yeah, and let it rest up against the frame while well, I cracked them uh, with a socket wrench, and so I just went to the bottom one uh, while it was down, and then I'd crack, turn it, turn the CV and shaft again, drop, uh, crack the next one, and so on, it's all six on both sides. Then you're going to want to, um, this thing, <sighs> sorry. The, those damn birds, I swear. <laughs> I chase them all over the driveway, out of the garden. They'll eat the flowers, everything. So anyway, now you've got these these two loosened. Almost out, and this one out completely. These all, the nuts removed, and the studs will still be hanging in the CVs. And also, the CVs want to come out as you're pulling it away, so you'll want to pry it apart there a little bit. Uh, I stuck a screw screwdriver in there, pry it apart, and then um, once I got the stud past the holes, all the way past the holes on the CV flange, I turned the um, the CV a little bit, and as pu as I was pushing it back this way, and turned it a little bit so the s the ends of the bolt studs would um, uh, t sit rest on the flange of the CV and not go back into the hole. I didn't want them to go back in. So then, once I got that one out, the, this one out on this side, it's still supported by a jack, so it's not going to drop down. Um, then I was able to completely remove this one and still left this one hanging in, in there a little bit. Completely remove that bolt, drop it down a little bit, and then... Um, remove the cross member. Uh, it's four bolts, 
So two nuts on the rear. The ones on the dip side are a little bit harder to get to there, you can see. Uh, but just put a closed in on that side um, and a breaker or something on the other side and that can't move and then crack them. I, you know, cracked one on the ha with a hammer on this side and wound up with this, so, with a sledgehammer, so, uh, <laughs> just be careful, needless to say. Um, varying torque values on all this, I think these are like 67 pounds, the front cover are 18, um, the CV to axle flange nuts are 60, um, the cross member, I couldn't find anything, I went with 60. Um, I just could not find find it in the book. And then, like I said, these are 100, uh, and then 123, 123. Um, so now you've got the cross member out, this completely out, that completely out, all these nuts broken on both sides, and this broken away from that, you know, pulled away a little bit and separated and turned so that it won't pop back in the holes. Um, then you can let the jack down a little bit, start letting it down, um, you know, close to the floor, but not quite. And then you can pull this. I pulled this, this one off completely uh, with a piece of wood holding up on the tube so that it wouldn't just go, you know, fall out or slide out this way and fall on the ground. Um, you know, your jack should support it, so you shouldn't have that problem. But I did that just in case. Um, once I got that down, uh, this one down. Um, the axle was basically like at an angle like this uh, with the tube side up and I kind of pulled it away from this CV and uh, again the CV wants to come with it so I just pried a little thing there and uh, a little crowbar in there and then turned it and so it wouldn't slide back in there and because um, the threads want to hang up on the on the flange of the CV and all that so um, then I slid it down. Once it was out, I kept it on the jack and then cracked all the um, uh, drive shaft b uh, bolts. I think actually, I think I did the drive shaft bolts before I pulled this last one and that one completely out. So it's up to you. But before you pull these out, these two, uh, you need to crack these six on each side, six uh, six nuts on each side. So, once it was out, um, got it on my tailgate, supported on some wood on both sides so I could crack uh, these housing bolts off right here. The tube actually comes off, but this, the axle is separate from that tube. The tube is just a housing, you know. So, anyway, that's kind of a rundown of it, if uh, anybody has any questions. The, the drive shaft to diff companion flange um, bolts and nuts go to, I think it's 22 to 36. I went to 30, I think. Um, um, in this case, I'm using a different diff, so I had a different flange, so there was really no part point in marking uh, the diff, you know, the all the way across from the diff, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the drive shaft flange and the diff companion housing on the back of the diff. Um, but if you're using your same axle and just putting gears in, you'd want to mark it all the way across with a pin on that n on from the nut, all the way across the, the drive shaft flange, um, and then all the way across the, the companion flange on the back of the diff. And while it's out, you know, it's a good time to change the rear seal if you want. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people agree, don't, if it ain't broke, don't mess with it. Why bother? Uh, especially since that's not the biggest deal. Uh, to change that, um, to change that seal on the back of the diff. So, um, anyway, it's in. Everything's down to torque, uh, proper torque value, and I will see soon how how this rolls off road when I get my motor back and slap it back in. I got the the boot from Marlin Crawler. Thank you, Big Mike. Uh, this boot right here. Um, mine was completely disintegrated, and I guess it does make sense to keep that clean, especially if you got little leaks here and there, and stuff drips down the bell housing. Always winds up in, going in there. So, uh, plus mine was leaking badly from that seal that you guys should see in my build a little bit back. Um, I replaced the input shaft 
uh, bearing retainer seal. It's on the inside of that um, that flange. With, I think it had nine bolts in it or seven, something like that. Um, so everything's ready to go back in. Just need the motor. <laughs> That's it, guys. And I appreciate again very much your help and uh, looking things up and or just giving me tips on what has worked for you, etc. I really appreciate it. And I will be back with more soon. Hopefully going to do my suspension next, but I think with my daughter's car having a bunch of needs, that's going to get put on hold again. So we'll see. Thanks again, guys. You got to take rocks. <laughs>